Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings, and we generally like to talk a lot of bollocks about tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about an ancient pick up and deliver game. We're going to be talking about Merchant of Venus. This is the second edition. We're going to be talking about a classic game, not a standard game. In this game, you'll be traveling around the galaxy, picking up goods and delivering them to different planets in order to give you credits that will allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like, what we don't like. Then we'll come back and we'll tell you whether or not Merchant of Venus is still worth playing. When was it? 1988. I'll let you figure that out for yourselves. Whether or not it's worth playing today or in the future. So remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the notification stuff and all that shite. And we'll see you after this. Bollocks! So, Merchant of Venus, how do you play this game? So Merchant of Venus is a pick up and deliver game. It's also a roll and move game. You're going to get your home alien culture and they will have a special system that they're tied to where they will get a discount, be able to build spaceports cheaper. Anyway, it don't really matter, does it? So you're going to set up all of the alien cultures and all the goods that they want and goods that they're selling to the left hand side of the board. Each alien race is going to have a number between one and 14 and these will correspond to the alien culture cards that you'll be placing out face down. These will be revealed as you progress through the game. So the first phase is the movement phase. You'll look at your character sheet and you'll see that you'll get assigned a certain amount of speed dice dependent on the class of your ship. The shittier the class, the less dice you will roll. And there's also space for cargo and you'll see there's two pips. Different goods require different number of pips. When the pips are exhausted, you can't stuff no more into your hole, can you? So what you do, you roll the speed dice and you will move that number of spaces. There's a few different things you've got to be aware of when you're moving your ship around the board. You've got to be aware of hazard spaces. If you come across a hazard space, then you'll have to pay the number of credits that are displayed on that space. If you come to a navigation space, what you'll have to do, you have to take one of the dice that you rolled for movement and you have to place it in your navigation spot on your player board. And then that will determine which way you will go when you leave the navigation space, right? This can be good. This can be really, really bad. When you move, you'll have to move the entire distance rolled on your speed dice unless you stop at a spaceport or you land on a surface city. If you want to land on a surface city, more often than not, you'll have to go through a green line. And when you move across a green line, it will cost you two movement points as opposed to one. So when you land on a surface city or on a space station, then you'll be able to make first contact with that culture what you'll do you'll be able to flip the card over and then you'll take all of the bits and pieces on the left hand side of the board and you'll chuck them on that planet in the respective spaces there'll be the culture tile itself and then there'll be a factory deed some factory goods and some standard goods right the first contact card will then also give you a bartering bonus so you can sort of do a little bit of a backhander with the alien race that you met first, right? So if you want to sell a good, then you will have to look at the numbers on the bottom of the toll you're trying to sell. And these are the alien races that want to buy your goods. What you'll do is you'll flip the tile over and you'll sell it for the amount of credits that is listed on the space in the center. You'll ignore the green and the red numbers for the purposes of the classic game. These are for the standard game. And then you'll take that number of credits and you'll put them in your personal supply, right? There's also passengers that you can pick up. Passengers come out of what's called the bonus cup. Whenever you sell a good or fulfill a demand token or you fulfill a passenger journey, you will put them into the bonus cup and you'll draw new tiles out and place them on the respective spots, right? So if you want to pick up a passenger, you take the tile, put it in front of you, and then you will go to the location they want you to go to. You'll drop them off, stick them in the bonus cup, and you'll get the amount of dosh that they are willing to give you. So like I said, you can buy factory deeds, you can buy the spaceport deeds if you want. Spaceports give you a discount if you or somebody else goes there. Ordinarily, if you were trading with a culture on the turn that you land there, you'll only be able to do one buy and one sell action. But if you land at a spaceport, you can do an unlimited amount of transactions. Makes it a little bit cheaper, makes it a little bit more efficient and stops your brain from imploding. So some cultures also allow you to upgrade your ship. You pay the cost and then you'll look at all the different ships. There's four ships. Some of them are faster. Some of them allow you to load more goods into the hole and you'll pay the cost and you'll swap out your ship and you'll transfer all the stuff that was on your original ship into your new ship. Whoopie do. So there's various other bits and pieces. You can buy drives that will allow you to skip the yellow 
or red spaces, or you can get combo draws allow you to skip both. You can get shields, which allow you to absorb 20 credits worth of damage when you go through a hazard space. So some of the encounter tokens will give you relics. These are good and bad. One of the bad ones is the jump start relic. When a player with this relic starts the declare heading step if it's moving. This is at the beginning of your turn where you have to declare which way you want to go. We don't play with this because everyone always forgets. So we just say sod that. We're just going to decide where we go after we roll the dice. But yeah, I know you're screaming at me, but do I look bothered? They choose a revealed Telegate token and then they roll their speed dice. If one of the speed dice matches the chosen Telegate, they must assign that die to the navigation and immediately walk to that Telegate. But if the speed does not match his chosen Telegate, he must choose one die to assign to the navigation and walk to the matching Telegate if it's on the ball. This is good if it works in your favour, but it's really, really bad if it don't. Right, so you might find a shield. It makes it a little bit cheaper, doesn't it? You don't have to go out and buy one. You might find the gate lock, and this says when a player with this relic enters a telegate space, he may choose to treat the telegate as a blue space instead. So these relics are good and bad at the same time, but they're there, and uh, yeah, you have to take a bit of a risk when you flip over that encounter token. So you'll keep doing this. You'll keep traveling around the galaxy, buying and selling stuff, and the player who gets 2,000 credits at the end of their turn will be the winner of merchant of penis venus so what do we like about merchant of venus so the first thing we really like about merchant of venus is the sense of exploration you get when you are first traversing around a galaxy discovering all the alien cultures the fact that these cultures are hidden means that you get a lot of replayability when you're exploring as well you don't really know which cultures are going to match up with which areas how far away they are from the goods that they want and the ones they want to sell it's really really interesting waiting to see where all these different cultures are going to be and what goods they're going to offer you right so the next thing we really like about Merchant of Venus is the feeling you get when you successfully chain all these different movements together. Not only are you going to be able to upgrade your ships, improve the amount of dice that you roll, but you'll also be able to augment that with different drives, which allows you to travel further. When you get a shield as well, then you'll be able to skip over some of those hazard spaces and you'll be able to travel from one point all the way across the galaxy if you are smart enough to use those telegates to your advantage. Right, there's nothing better than moving from one side of the board all the way to the other in one big fucking move. So the next thing that we like about Merchant of Venus is the game stays fresh all the way through through the use of the bonus cup. Every time you fulfill a demand or fulfill a passenger's journey or flog an item, then you're going to chuck it into the bonus cup. You're going to be reaching around, pulling out extra stuff to put on the board. And one thing that makes this great is that the passengers and demand tokens don't start on the board from the beginning. So they're going to be coming out throughout the game. This is a good way to restock the existing culture's stuff. And it also introduces extra stuff to discover as the game goes on. And we really like the way that new stuff is added as the game goes on, right? So what don't we like about Merchant of Venus? So the first thing that we don't like about Merchant of Venus is the fact that it's bleeding, roll and move. I hate roll and move unless it's implemented in a innovative and interesting way. And that's not the case here. It's not like, say, Formula D where you've got these different corners that are going to break up the monotony of roll and move. And it's not like games like Arvo Caesar or anything like that. No, that's not roll and move. It's, it's like player card move. It's the same thing. You're bound by the amount of dice you roll and it's not really any way to mitigate a bad roll aside from upgrading your ship and even then you might be shafted with rolling like three ones or four ones and those navigation spots are a pain in the ass as well which leads us on to our next point is that this game is really really frustrating when you are forced off course through nothing but a random die roll yeah you might be planning to go to see culture 14 and just because you rolled some shitty dice and you couldn't put that die into the navigation spot you end up veering off on a really wild tangent chasing chickens going on a wild goose chase and all your plans go out the window through more or less no thought you own so yeah that's really frustrating and if i had a brick wall and i'm playing this I definitely want to bang my head against it. Next thing we don't like about Merchant of Venus is the game is too bloody long. It goes on for what? We played this recently and it took two hours just to get to around about 
1,000 credits, yeah? So playing with four players, trying to get to 2,000 credits, God, it takes too long, yeah? And the rule book does mention short variants where you can cut down the amount of credits. But that game feels incomplete, yeah? So there's this weird quandary where your brain starts to turn to mush after about two and a half hours. But if you played it any less than that, then you wouldn't really feel like the game was flowing or have any sort of momentum. So game length doesn't have any kind of comfortable medium and that's a real shame. So the final thing we don't like about Merchant of Venus is the fact that does my nutting looking for all the different cultures on the board. When you're looking at the tiles that you want to sell or buy or whatever, you're looking at the numbers underneath it tell you which culture wants the goods you want. And because there's 14 of the bloody things, you're looking around the board thinking, well, where's number 14? You're asking people, has anyone seen number eight? Where's number eight? And everyone's looking and you think, oh, there it is. And then you're thinking, well, actually, can't really get there can I so you're looking for number four and where there's four different cultures that want the goods a lot of the game time is just staring at the board trying to find the bleeding cultures right it would have been better had there been some sort of maybe three-dimensional vertical marker that identified the different cultures quickly I thought about getting some of those Arkham Horror the card game like little standy things and sticking the actual culture markers in them just to make it that little bit easier to identify where the cultures are right but yeah that is a real pain in the bum bum. So, is Merchant of Venus worth your time and bother today and in the future? So we're going to say, maybe, maybe not. It's a decent enough pick up and deliver game that's been unfairly tarnished by the level of exaltation provided by Eric Summerer. The very, very basic childlike roll and move mechanic it can be very frustrating until the latter stages of the game where it doesn't really have any bearing on the way that you can move through the galaxy the exciting and interesting sense of exploration just about manages to pull this game out of the doldrums right i would much prefer to play zaya legends of a drift system than this zaya gives you so many more options it gives you a greater sense of exploration it's also got that modular board system where you'll be drawing tiles and placing them the galaxy will grow as you progress through the game but having said that this is an adequate if not antiquated pick up and deliver game there are two versions of this game in the second edition box we're talking about a classic version there's a standard version which we haven't played and it will make the game that little bit more complicated so it may be worth seeking out this game if you do like a little bit more meat with your potatoes right but as it stands we can't really recommend merchant of venus because we have got zaya legends of drift system and if you couple it with the embers of a forsaken star expansion that game blows this one straight out of the water so there you go that's merchant of venus remember if you're new here please consider subscribing to this channel leave a comment in that section down there we'll see you next time